Hi, my name is Jesse Durham and today's video is going to be all about the infinite banking concept, assets, liabilities, and how they can interact in us taking the banking function back into our control and our ownership and our application. So let's begin by saying there is something to be recognized, much like Nelson in his book covers the human problem, the human issues at hand. We all have, it seems, a financial personality. I can tell you very quickly that I will make a fast purchase of something that is interesting to me. I am a spender. That's, that's my tendency. That's my nature. I enjoy buying things. I enjoy getting things, new toys, whatever the case may be. And I can also tell you that I'm married to a beautiful woman that will call me over something less than $100, and it'll make me laugh. She'll call me up and ask me about something, not about what I think about that thing, but even to this day, you know, and we're going on 13 years married at the time of this, this video, 20 years total together. We dated for several years. We met young, and I'll still get a phone call over something less than $100, and it makes me laugh when she does it, although I appreciate it and I respect it. And again, what I'm doing here is just pointing out that it is useful to recognize what our natural tendencies are so that we can be who we are, but in a very productive and a reasonable way, right? And I'm not here to tell you to do anything in particular, but we're having a discussion about the infinite banking concept as it concerns personal finance, how we look at assets, liabilities, and we'll see what else we can get into. So in recognizing what our financial IQ is, our financial personality is. Let's address some more subjects because what we will see, those that are parents out there and grandparents, is that more is caught than taught. And that's another famous saying from Nelson Nash regarding the infinite banking concept. But it, but it permeates everything, I believe, in my opinion, that our children observe us and they catch on to things a lot quicker than what we would even actively tell them or try and teach them and describe to them verbally or to communicate to them, the strongest form of communication is going to be what they see us doing and that they adopt just naturally because of the environment and the instruction and the example that we make for them. And that can be a, that can be a very joyful moment. That can be a prideful moment, a wholesome pride. But it can also be very ooh, convicting even, perhaps. I know that I've experienced that myself where I've seen one of my sons do something that maybe I could even tighten up, that I could dial in in my own life as an example in front of them. So more is going to be caught than taught. Let's recognize that. Let's address a couple of definitions. Let's start by looking at assets themselves, liabilities themselves. Now, I'm a big fan of Robert Kiyosaki's material. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was one of the first, if not the first, uh, personal growth and development book that I'd ever read. Well, aside from my Bible, I'd call the Bible the first that I'd ever read personally. But Rich Dad, Poor Dad really spoke to me because I'd never had it communicated to me what an asset was, what a liability was, what their differences were, and even how different people will categorize those differently. You know, for the longest time, and you may hold this to be true one way or the other, and that's fine. This is just a discussion about it and how it applies to the infinite banking concept. But homes were considered an asset. And Robert Kiyosaki comes along and says, your home is not an asset, it's a liability. You know, because it costs you money via taxes and the upkeep. And it, it, it costs you something to maintain, of course. So it's not actively providing an income or a cash flow. So that would put it in the category of liability instead of an asset, in his opinion. Now, are there ways to have real estate that is an asset? Absolutely. And there are many different ways to do that. But as a consumer, as a homeowner, and again, here, yes, we could have that discussion walked out to where we say, well, if we sell that home, you know, we could get a lump sum that, that also would be able to contribute to our net worth, etc. Sure, sure. But I would also point out that there are ways to use leverage 
instead of liquidation to realize that. So not to get too deep into the weeds, although I don't mind the discussion, there is a difference between assets. If we decide to arrive at the definition of an asset being something that provides a cash flow and income, whereas a liability is something that as consumers may even be necessary. You know, it's necessary in today's day and time and economy and business, etc., to have a motor vehicle. And that vehicle, the moment a brand new vehicle is driven off the lot, it depreciates. It goes down in value, and from there on, it's the liability um, of that. Of, of it's a liability for that owner. You know, it costs something to own it. There are property taxes, inspections, etc., and then the operation of the vehicle, the maintenance of the vehicle. So. I would not argue that it's that it's necessary. You know, we, we have more than one ourselves. And, and yet it's important to recognize that it's a liability for us. Necessary as a consumer, sure, but it's a liability as well. So in looking at assets that cash flow or provide income, liabilities that, even if they are necessary, cost us something to procure, to maintain, to upkeep, etc. If we use those classifications and if we consider the principles laid out in R. Nelson, R. Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Banker, of the Golden Rule, the Arrival Syndrome, all of the human problems, we can approach looking at the infinite banking concept first by the product itself, a whole life policy that's been properly structured with a mutual company that also pays a dividend. Should be with a company that's paid a dividend, you know, well over a hundred years. The moment you are the owner of such a policy, a policy that's been structured for the banking purpose, you own an asset that has a very real cash value today and a guaranteed growth associated with it, a very respectable expectation of a dividend, like I've said, you know, companies that have paid dividends well over 100 years. And with the unilateral contract ultimately maturing into a death benefit, which will be a tax-free transfer of wealth to our, to our heirs or to our beneficiaries. So that policy, and anybody who's seen the the movie It's a Wonderful Life. There's there's actually a whole life policy, you know, that's attempted to be used as, as leverage in a in a certain situation because of the very real value of whole life insurance just as a as a product, let alone, you know, a policy being structured to have a, a vast amount of cash value for the the privatized banking function. So it's a very real asset from day one, both because of the cash values that it provides immediately, that allows the owner to be able to access immediately via withdrawals or policy loans, but also the ultimate death benefit. Therefore, what I'm trying to point out is the product itself satisfies that check. We can check the box that it is, it is an asset. You know, but more importantly, what, what Nash said in his work, of course, was that, you know, our need for finance is much greater than our need for a death benefit. So the death benefit is not to be disregarded, but the associated cash value that represents a net today, it represents today, you know, a net value of the death benefit is what we can use as a tool for satisfying that need for finance. And, you know, virtually no one, no one that I know of, and definitely not personally, you know, will be able to provide for their full financial footprint with one policy. So a policy will provide a portion of our need for finance in, in whatever our financial footprint may be as a household, as a small business, a big business, as an investor, whatever the case may be, where our come from is. So in, in, in recognizing that the product itself is an asset because of its guarantees, because of its private ownership, because of the control that we have 
of that entity, but also in recognizing, obviously, the crux of what it is to become your own banker, how we can access the cash values to provide for some need that we currently have in our household, in our business, in our investing. That also is an a asset. The access that we have to the whole life policy, that is an asset in and of itself. That banking function, us owning a warehouse for our wealth, right? Having an entity that we own and control wherein we can establish and, and amass, where we can bank, where we can build up, right? Our funds, our money, our capital, but also wherein we can access to deploy for some need that we have, and then, of course, if we're playing on a specker, which we should, you know, we pay ourselves first, we pay ourselves with interest, and then we recapture the money. So we got a place to put it. That's that's rule number one. Pay yourself first. Fund a policy. Pay premiums to a policy that you own, okay, that I own. I pay premiums into the policy that I own. You would pay premiums into the policy that you own. And then rule number two, pay yourselves with interest. So when we access our funds for you know, buying that necessary li liability of a, of a vehicle. When we buy cars, for just for example, when we buy cars, we would pay ourselves back because any money that we're borrowing, uh, we're going to be, if we're playing Honest Bank, we're going to be paying interest back on top of that. That will go back to our warehouse, our policy, and that's satisfying rule number three, which is recapturing the money. So we pay ourselves first, pay ourselves with interest, and then recapture the money. So it's adding that extra step of funding a whole life policy that we own and control to buying cars that then turns, and, and this is where I want to point out something very important, that is what changes the action of procuring a vehicle from a consumer only buying a liability Something, something that is going to depreciate in value and that will be a liability for the entire use of that vehicle, no matter how great of a vehicle it is. It's a liability. That's its classification. Whereas those of us that are actively practicing the infinite banking concept, we procure an asset first and we use that asset, the banking function therein, our, our access to uh, capital to be able to procure the necessary liability but then we also recapture uh, the money back plus interest. So I love it. And this leads me to a couple of different things. As, as I'm laying this out for us to consider here, the idea of adding one extra step to being folks that buy cars, you use cars. I, I don't have my first vehicle anymore. I haven't bought my last one, God willing, obviously. I've had many vehicles. I'll have many more. But when we add that step, one... I mentioned Kiyosaki earlier, Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where he really, really lays out the concept of how we could use assets to pay for liabilities. Okay, Income, productive, some entity that we own and control should be, Okay, produces income, cash flow, it's a vehicle for us to procure the liabilities that we want you know whether that's 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 some new item to put on the wall or some new item to park out in the driveway whatever the case may be whatever it is that you're already doing by adding that step we're going to be using and in this scenario i would say obviously that by buying a whole life policy with a mutual company that we own then we have procured a liability uh, excuse me, an asset to be able to purchase that liability. We buy the asset first, and then we can access the cash values in that asset to be able to procure our next vehicle or the next vacation or a child's college or a child's wedding or just, I mean, insert anything right there, right? It's the infinite banking concept. But it's a very different scenario to receive income from, you know, your earnings or however it is that you are earning income and buy it, and we could talk to about getting earning income with all the stimulus money that the government's printing out currently. <clears throat> but regardless, just simply taking dollars to buy a vehicle and instead procuring an asset and using that asset to procure a vehicle. 
two birds with one stone accomplishing more than one task. And for me, it, I can't see a scenario and lay out a scenario like that without also thinking of what Warren Buffett has famously said about, you know, rule number one being don't lose money. And rule number two being don't forget number one, right? So in practicing the infinite banking concept and remembering those three rules of pay yourself first, pay yourself with the interest and recapture every dollar, we're satisfying you know, all these different philosophies from, from some of the greats out there to, to not lose money. And if you've lost money before, it's not fun. You know, it, it only takes one unsavory, uh, you know, circumstance or, or experience to be able to to understand what I'm saying right there. It's not fun to lose money. And that's, that's why Buffett says it for rule number one. You know, so if we could look at buying cars for the rest of our life as we're still going to buy the cars that we otherwise would buy, but we can get the money back too, I mean, why would we not? And let's not forget that every dollar that comes through our hands is either going to go back out to pay interest to someone else to whom we are beholden if we've traditionally commercially financed things in our life. Or if we're setting that money aside somewhere, somewhere, I would question, do we own that entity? Do we control it? What are the terms, conditions? Were they set up by us or someone else? But regardless, or we set that money aside somewhere, save it up to pay cash for what it is that we do, and we forfeit the opportunity to earn on our dollars, to have our dollars as little employees working for us, because again, Time can time or, or people, people's efforts can earn income and money can earn income. Money can earn money or people can earn money. Okay. Both are great. Being able to actively do something that we're great at to earn an income. That's a beautiful thing. Mozart should obviously be doing, you know, music. Michelangelo obviously needed to be sculpting and things. So do what you're great at. I'm not trying to diminish that at all. You know, all, we're all unique. We all bring some specific something to the world. I believe that for sure. And yet, I couple that with remembering that Robert Kiyosaki says, you know, the the wealthy don't don't work for money. So, and and now Nelson Nash uh, spoke about you know the importance of looking at passive income, just having options, having systems and tools and ownership in place for us to be able to receive passive income when we want. So both of those. So we're either going to be paying interest to someone, forfeiting the interest that we otherwise could have been earning on our money, or practice the infinite banking concept where we get the money back plus the interest. We keep that in our own family or our own business or our own investing portfolio. We maintain control over the banking function. Now, a little bit more on, on that point that I made earlier, that comment, that sly comment that I made earlier about, you know, the government printing money. I mean, just as a point of interest, if you've never checked out the United States debt clock online, it's a really interesting um, phenomenon, I guess we would say. It's a really interesting phenomenon, just what's happening there. I'm sure we'll have to cover that that whole concept, that that material in its own video in its own episode if if not in private conversation because it's it's a very real circumstance and situation and we're seeing it augment um, at the time of this recording again with the government literally printing out and I say printing out are they really printing out you know trillions of dollars you know or is that happening digitally and again that's probably yet another conversation to be had at a different point in time but all that to say if you've not checked out the u.s debt clock i think it's very interesting considering what that does look like pragmatically you know in in considering whether dollars are being printed out or whether you know digits are just moving from one place to another virtual digits practically for the american household 
whether it's us receiving stimulus money from somewhere, whether it's us considering a portion of our cash flows, whether we are employees or self-employed or business owners or investors, however we are remunerated, okay, commissions, wages, earnings, profits, etc. Every time I hear that, I, I think of Jim Rohn saying profits are better than wages. I'm pretty sure that was Jim Rohn. Profits are better than wages. Just food for thought. I've been an employee. That was my entire background was being an employee. But I'll throw that out there. Profits are better than wages. However we have money track through our hands, it comes and it goes is what I'm saying. And when it goes, if there's a way for us to be able to get some of it back, and eventually build up a system that we only control where we get it all back. That is a beautiful thing because we're literally accomplishing more than one task with the same dollars. We have the ownership, we have the control, and all the other benefits that we would experience by being our own banker, not abdicating the banking function to some third-party lender or some commercial bank, but us for our family, you for your family bringing banking back to the me and the you level. So I hope that this discussion has been helpful. I hope it's provoked some thought. I hope that it will encourage you to read or reread R. Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, to pick up the phone or to send an email, have a conversation, drop a comment in this video, whatever would help you along your journey. It's been a great pleasure for me to bring the subject to you of assets, liabilities, how the infinite banking concept plays into both of those, looking at the things that are appreciating in our life, depreciating in our life. It's been a great pleasure for me. To reach us, you can contact 828-817-4223. You can email drumtalents at gmail.com. I look forward to our next conversation. Have a great day. Take care.